previously on Onboard Lifestyle. While we were waiting for my dad's lab results, the crew of BASIC decide to keep pushing south. We have a leisurely sail from Dana Point to Oceanside. There, we finish installing the autopilot, receive some good news, and eat some amazing food. We make the next leg from Oceanside to Mission Bay in perfect sailing conditions. Look at this! We're sailing! We spend the night on the hook in the Mariner's Basin before sailing to San Diego with only one minor hiccup. Basic anchors outside San Diego and gets a bit of rest before leaving the States en route to Ensenada, Mexico. It is almost five and we are about one mile from the Mexican border. <laughs> it's just so crazy. There's no wind still, but I'm thinking that once the sun <laughs> rises, <laughs> once the sun rises, um, let's get a little, little breeze. But how exciting! I Finally, know. all this time, and yet look at this. We are in full winter gear yeah. because it is we so are cold. Ready for <laughs> Another, another, another. About an hour and forty-five minutes, and we'll see the sun. Oh, it feels so nice, though. It does. It was a. It's a really dark night, overcast. Yeah. We've been passing. How many cruise ships did we just go by? Two. Two cruise ships. It was actually kind of nice. They lit the whole place up. Now, now that we're beyond them, it's it's pretty dark. Yeah. But now we have our autopilot going. We have radar. We have. <laughs> We're set. We got our fishing license. <laughs> <laughs> We're set. <laughs> it's official. Huh? Does it feel good? I can actually see the border. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Pop. <laughs> good, good, good. Here, hold this. I'm demonstrating my pantomiming <laughs> skills here. Good, good, good. Okay, ready? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's kind of strange. You can actually see the. You can look yeah, at that. Yeah, you can see the border. Of There's like no Mexico. lights, no lights, no lights, and all of a sudden the border, and it's Tijuana. <laughs> okay, here we are. We're officially in We're Mexico officially now. Officially Mexican waters. Wow. That's a milestone. It is. All this time. All this time. All this time. <laughs> you're a lonely sailor, and your soul is made of wind. I'm a weary pirate, and my heart is made of dust and gray and spoiled champagne. I've got troubles, I've got sins, I'm my worst enemy, but I've still got a lot to give. So I said, hey, don't you want to come, come and run away? All right, this is our first time in Ensenada, and it looks like we got a new person at the helm. <laughs> you good? Yep, I got this. Okay, ladies, how was your first night in Mexico? It was really nice. We got to sleep after a long passage. So that was nice, but we can't even leave the boat. <laughs> We're waiting for the health inspector to come and give us the clear to uh, step on Mexican land. I know. We're in quarantine right now. Yeah. And we came in late last night after hours. and I it was, was really hoping for some tacos <laughs> last night. I know. So we'll do it tonight. We'll do it today. They should be here any second. We'll get the clear. And uh, we'll go. They said we got to mask up when they come on board and then uh, do what they need to do and we can get checked in. Then we'll go check in with the port captain. Then it's time to explore. Big day. <laughs> yep. Emma's like, oh, I want to see everything. <laughs> I know, it's so cool. What we're going to do is that I'm going to take some information about your ship. Okay. Then the basic information about the people on board. 
Are you the only three people? Yes. yes. Okay. And names, age, nationality. I'm gonna take your temperatures. I'm gonna measure your oxygen. Then I'm gonna make a few questions. After that, back here, back here we have five yes or no questions that the captain of the ship is gonna answer. And when we finish, if everything goes well, we will be ready to go. Okay. Sounds easy, right? Yeah. Easy so. and painless. <laughs> So this is an oxygen level test? Yes, this one measures the oxygen and the heartbeat rate. But what I am interested in is the oxygen. Because since the last year, there were some COVID cases without symptoms that the only thing that they manifest was a low, low oxygen. number of oh, oxygen. And when they started with symptoms, they had like 50% oxygen and that is pretty low. Thank you so much. And uh, looks like we're all clear with the proper paperwork to... Uh, so we're official. We're officially uh, checked in, not checked in, but we have our health certificate now. Just an advice. Yes. You go for tacos. Yes. Nothing less than five pesos. Nothing, yes. Those are the good ones that are better for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> they taste good, but they don't... Yeah, they don't feel good. <laughs> they don't feel good. <laughs> Well, you guys know which ones are the better tacos, right? Well, it's gonna depend on each person, but yes. yeah, <laughs> they're good taco places here. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. And a safe trip to the south. Yeah, we will. Well. It's official. No flag. more quarantine flag. <laughs> Not the perfect flag setup, but you know what? While in Mexico, we are gonna be courteous and and fly their flag. We just gotta get a better system. But this will work for now. Let's get it up there a little bit. There we go. It feels good, doesn't it? Welcome to Mexico. We are now day two in Ensenada and uh, spent most of yesterday getting checked in and uh, going to immigration, port captain, and also dealing with our uh, temporary import permit. Everything was just about done, but it was a little crazy because we also have uh, the Baja rally that's going down at the same time and there was a ton of boats in here that were needing to get checked in and out at the same time. So. Unfortunately, the port captain closed, and so Teal is going to go back to the port captain's office uh, this morning and hopefully get us all checked in. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, so nice to uh, finally be in Mexico. I'm just taking Compass for a walk uh, early enough that there's not other dogs around because he just doesn't play nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, going to be a fun day. We're hopefully going to stay here for just a few days. Um, TL wants to do an oil change and uh, just a couple other little little projects before we head back out. But I think that this is going to be the last marina we're going to be in for quite a while. There is nothing on this outside, but there are a ton of anchorages for us to check out. Checking into Mexico is pretty easy if you have all the correct paperwork for your crew and vessel. We chose to go with Cruiseport Marina because they help you with your check-in. I sent them all of our paperwork prior to our arrival and once we were cleared by the Mexican Health Department, the marina drove us to check in with the immigration, the port captain, and the Ben Hercito for your temporary import permit. They also provided us with a translator for a smooth process. Overall, the fees to check the crew and basic into Mexico were pretty reasonable. Now that we are officially checked in, it's time for us to hit the streets and eat as many tacos as we can. My mom is so excited. It's all she can taco about. We are so close to Mexico. I can taste it. At least the tacos anyways. <laughs> Did I say she's excited? Now this is what I'm talking about. Dig in. Okay, our first uh, Mexican taco, carnitas. Where
What do you think? The tacos here in Ensenada have been really good. I don't know which one's my favorite yet, but I'm making it my mission to try as many as possible before we leave. all this time we are now doing the final connections for our autopilot we actually set up a uh, temporary one just to make sure that uh, this autopilot works and then we just went ahead and calibrated let me show you what we did here because we didn't know if this was going to work we just tapped in to this fuse right here but ideally um, our autopilot needs more power so we're going to do its own lead so that's what teal's doing now and then we're going to be running wires back to the unit itself. Pretty exciting, huh? It is. The calibration was kind of um, tricky, but we got it done. And everything looks like it works. So this is getting a designated lead with its own uh, fuse breaker here. Putting it on a 15 amp fuse. Uh, run this line all the way back there and uh, we should be good. Pretty exciting. Are you excited to start running well, autopilot? Well, you know I am. <laughs> Why do I even ask, right? It's just having more hands on, on deck, you know? <laughs> Especially when we want to take a break and, you know, kind of hang out. Okay, I should have this end done. We'll pull it tight and start stringing it. The worst part is we have to pull out the washer dryer to get the lead behind it. That's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> I know you will. Can I just say? Your board's looking pretty nice. Hey, what can I say? It's what I do. No, I'm serious. It looks really good. Well, this all know, makes sense. It does. That's what's uh, the beauty of this, is I can look at this and know what every single wire does. It's crazy. One wire at a time and, I don't know, it just works. Here is our new breaker for the autopilot. Unfortunately, I don't have a label. We'll have to get that in order because it's going to drive me nuts until we get that. Okay, from this, the lead goes down into the battery compartment. Here's my wire harness that goes through this chase here. That goes all the way under the settee. One continuous pull. It's about 11 feet. into our heating compartment. I do have a, a messenger that I keep in here. And this messenger helps me pull the wires, makes it nice and easy, goes down through here. I've got another harness here, picks it up, goes through here, under the stairs. I don't need a messenger here because it's just a few feet. Behind the washer dryer, up into the cabinets. From the cabinetry, there's a run that goes under the cabinets, and we can pull it all the way into this compartment. It comes through this bulkhead here, and through this wire harness, and up into the autopilot. Everything now has its own designated lead. This unit is not going to throw any more current errors, and we should be good to go on our next leg. We'll test it out and uh, let you know. Emma, but for now, Emma, wait. What is it? hold on, there's a commotion going out here. Look, look over there. 
Okay, Emma, this way. Keep coming. See this palm tree? Past the palm tree. Keep going past. Right there, straight down. Come straight down. Okay, there's a, a bird that has an injured wing that was just struggling in the water, made it over the rock. Emma's going to come down and, and try to get it up onto the shore. Oh, poor bird. You can see the injury right here. It looks terrible. I know. Poor guy. Just come down to this big flat rock right here. Yeah. And you'll see it. You see it right there? Okay, now get a good grip around both its wings so they don't flop. And it can't bite you if you grab around its wings. Ready? Grab fast like and go. That? Yeah, yeah, go fast. Yep, perfect. Now pick it up. What kind of bird is it? Pigeon, I think. What kind of injury does it have? I really don't know. Okay, get it up to a nice spot in some shade. Camma. Okay, How's it look? Good. Oh. Don't get too close to it. Poor guy. At least now he can kind of dry up and maybe heal a little bit so he can start flying again. After I rescued the injured pigeon from the water, we found out that there is a person who takes care of all the birds around here, and he just happens to live on his boat in the marina. You named him yet? Uh, Dirty Birdie. Dirty Birdie because of the oil? because he's just filthy. Yeah. <laughs> but his feathers will grow back and he'll yeah, be... they will grow back because all these tail feathers are gone. Why has he got red on his tail? There's Bonita. This is the mother of all the white ones. Wow. I've known her two years. Out of all these birds, she was the first one to jump on me. But it, it took a long time to get out. Standing underneath the lights. So we're heading out of Ensenada tomorrow. So Em and I went and we provisioned. It's so pretty. <laughs> It's a little bit of a walk, but it was uh, it's still been fun. This place is uh, very interesting. It's touristy, and yet there's a lot of locals that kind of hang out here too. And of course, Emma, any chance she can find some softer ice cream she's gonna grab. <laughs> Super good. It's been fun here though. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to warmer weather though because it's about, I don't know, in the mid to uh, uh, upper 60s. Definitely not what we were anticipating, but we'll take what we can get. It'll take a while to train, but I think this is the one. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Cool. This is a first for us. We just got out of the music store because uh, uh, it was time for uh, Emma to get a new violin. Uh, she hasn't been playing it much just because her, her old violin is a little small. She's kind of outgrown it. Yeah, but I'm excited. I got a full size now, and I'm excited to tune it up and start playing again. So you'll be hearing some tunes from her soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the 
Thanks for watching this week's episode of Onward Lifestyle. If you liked our video, don't forget to leave us a like and remember to subscribe to our channel. These videos are made possible by the support of our awesome patrons. Join the crew if you can. After all this time, we are finally in Baja, Mexico. Checking in was a breeze to, thanks to the team of Cruise Port. Our internet connection will be sporadic as we travel down the Pacific Baja coast, so we may be silent for a few weeks. But we will do our best to upload our videos and share our adventures with you. See you then!